Just to clarify, according to the bylaws, when there's a vacancy on the executive board, the executive board votes to fill the vacancy. So just so it's not confusing when Spiro said the board voted, it was the executive board, which is how it's set up. And, and it's I an appointment, it's right. Yeah, it's an appointment. You were appointed to fill right. out. Of the and, you, and it's not, well, it doesn't really matter because we've only gotten into the beginning of our year, but it's not to fill the term, it's to start a new term for that person. That's just the way it's written. Got it. Uh -huh, two years more. <laughs> <laughs> no comment, Travis, I've had it. <laughs> um, all right, so let's go into the attendance. Uh, my name is Spiro Tsirkas, a Glen Cove Youth Bureau Executive Director, uh, IAC President. Good boy. Gabor Karsai, IAC Treasurer, representing Rotary. You're multiplying um, three times. Evelyn? And that equals 27. 27. Hello? <laughs> Evelyn, you're muted. And I cannot unmute you. All right, we'll come back to Evelyn. Kathy Santucci. Hi, Kathy Santucci, Glen Cove Center for Rehab and Emerge Rehab at Medical Plaza. Carolyn? Uh, Carolyn Wilson, representing North Shore Historical Museum. And I don't know if you want to. Uh, Kathy will be, well, Kathy Flynn will be taking over the past president position. No. Uh, uh, and yeah. Carolyn will fill in as the vice president uh, based on the executive board vote as well. Okay. So we have a big historical year coming up so we can use as much mind as possible. Uh, Dr. Israel, good morning. Mike Israel, Assistant Superintendent, Glencoe School District. Uh, you're trying to trick me, but Daniela. <laughs> Oh, you fixed it. I'm Jamala, and I represent the Blanco Center for Nursing and Rehab. I'm director of the cardiopulmonary services there. Welcome. Ms. Francesca? Uh, hi, I'm Francesca Carbone. I'm a social worker for SAFE. Victoria? Victoria? Hi, good morning, everybody. I'm Victoria Crosby, the president and founder of the Glencove Arts Council. Good morning. Uh, Dan Vogren. Good morning. I'm Dan Vogren. I'm the director <clears throat> of uh, Charles Evans Center at Glen Cove, formerly Malillo Center. Cindy? Cindy Rogers. I'm with Congressman Tom Swazi. All right. And this is where I'm going to get wrong again. Uh, Jamie. Hi, Jamie, Jamie, right? Jamie. 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 <laughs> That's me. Um, I'm Jame. I'm the um, director of um, fund development for Tigerman, and I am also on the board of the Chamber of Commerce. Yeah. Ms. Caballero. Oh, hi. Uh, I work, I'm a bilingual outreach worker, and I work for SAFE. Thank you. Reverend Brenda. Hi, um, I'm Reverend Brenda Ford. I am the chaplain representing Glen Cove Hospital. Oh. Welcome. Thank you. Sharon? Hi, uh, Sharon Harris, Executive Director of SAFE and past president of IAC. Thank you. Fatima? <laughs> sorry. <laughs> good morning. I'm sorry. I'm trying to uh, work this out with the video and, and the microphone. Uh, good morning, everyone. Fatima Cano Ramirez with La Fuerza, co director. Shannon? Hi, good morning, everyone. I'm Shannon Vollin, the public relations officer for the city of Glen Cove, and I'm re representing the mayor's office today. Thank you. Tanya? Hi, this is Tanya Simmons. Thank you for allowing me to join your meeting. I'm with TSEG Long Island, and I'm a consumer advocate. Thank you. Uh, Melissa? Good morning, everyone. Um, I'm Melissa Centellis. I'm from Planned Parenthood <laughs> of Greater New York. Um, I work with the Family Planning Benefit Program. Welcome. Travis? 
I'm Travis. I am a uh, pastor at Trinity Lutheran Church, and I am on the IAC board president. I no. think, uh, I, is iPhone George? Oh, no, that's Camille. Is she connect? No, Anne, Camille, what's going on? There's two more people just came in. Okay. Uh, I don't know if I missed anyone. The rest has no yes, pictures. You have. Yes, you have two more people just joining. Okay. Uh, they can if speak. You just join, please uh, announce yourself. It's Mary Ann Small from uh, St. Vincent de Paul in Glen Cove. Welcome, Mary Ann. Uh, there is one connecting. I think Anne Fangman just joined. Uh, from the CDA, I don't see her. I think George was on as well. All right. Now. Uh, if you haven't announced yourself, please announce yourself. Someone is still, uh, I think Anne is still connecting. All right. So when they come in, they can announce themselves. Uh, we have three presenters for today's meeting. Uh, the first one is Daniela Badalamenti. Perfect. Good. From uh, Heart Lung Fitness. Uh, second, we will have Tanya Simmons from PSCNG. And third, uh, Sharon Harris and crew uh, just going over Red Ribbon Week and uh, some activities that they have. So, uh, Daniela, you can definitely start first. Okay. Um, Kathy, are you starting? Daniela, it's fine. Daniela works with me at Glen Cove Center and she's actually our cardio pulmonary program. So she'll talk to you guys today about lung and heart health, uh, especially in this season of, you know, cold and flu season. And with the combination of the COVID pandemic on top of that, she can give us some tips about healthy breathing. So thank you. Um, good morning, everyone. I'm Daniela. As I, Kathy has stated, I do run the cardiopulmonary program at Glen Cove Center for Nursing and Rehab. Um, so I just wanted to talk to you a little bit about um, lung and heart health. I mean, it's no secret that heart and lung health have been such a prominent um, health field kind of topic as it is. The, um, the highest diseases are cardiac and lung health, especially now that it's, until recently, it's shown its true effects in the mass population for those who aren't even experiencing a long-term condition. So um, as we enter the winter months, I want to take this time to equip you all with just certain few key facts as well as tips for your lung and heart health in order to increase your overall health this winter and honestly to carry it on through um, your entire life. Um, so what I like to do is I like to educate my patients first and foremost on promoting um, your own self-care and your being an advocate for yourself. Um, and how I do that is I teach them the strategies and symptoms as well as techniques that they can utilize in order to protect your lungs and really optimize your lung function, which is hand in hand with your heart function. Um, just so I'm not gonna bore you with scientific facts. Um, I just wanted to make the point that your heart and your lung are a married couple. Without them both working each on its own, it's not gonna work. Um, they have to work together. Um, if one's failing, the other one's going to be affected. Um, so that what is the best way to do that is exercising. Um, I'm talking about regular exercise, yes, which can mean walking, um, cycling, um, just regular exercise, um, aerobic exercising. Um, those are going to help that cardiac fitness that um, we all want to achieve. Um, but also, um, that could be difficult during the winter. So <laughs> if that's a lifestyle, go to the mall and, you know, safety-wise with COVID and walk, um, going up and down the steps, things like that. Um, but also, what people don't mention is targeting our lungs. Um, we can physically exercise our lungs just like we're exercising our bicep muscle. Um, and I actually want to teach you a few of those. Um, feel free to do it with me. I think that I will attach a link in the comment section. I'm, did someone say something? I'm sorry. 
Okay. Um, I will attach a link in the comment section so you can refer back to it. Um, so I'm going to go over two of the most prominent ones, um, pursed lip breathing and diaphragmatic breathing, which I call belly breathing. Um, so I'm just, uh, so I want to talk about the benefits really quick. Per pursed lip breathing um, will improve the um, overall circulation in your body, the oxygen. So when you're breathing in, you are creating the oxygen, bringing it in through your blood, and then you're blowing out that stale air that can sometimes get trapped in your lungs. Um, so I'm gonna demonstrate. Basically, I tell everyone, breathe in through your nose, so smell the roses, and blow out your birthday candles, okay? The pursed lip breathing, like you're blowing out your birthday candles, is the most important part because it, A, promotes relaxation, um, B, it just keeps your airways open longer, so you're able to create that, um, that decrease that workload, okay, by keeping your airways open. And also, it relieves your shortness of breath. So, um, if you all will do it with me, okay? So, I like to say breathe in two seconds and breathe out four seconds, okay? So, breathe in. So all the roses, one, two, three, four, blow that out. Good. So um, you, I like to say do that um, at least 10 times. Um, that's gonna really improve that, that blood flow and improve your oxygenation to your muscles. Um, Before you're recording this, right? Sorry, I'm talking really fast, I apologize. Yeah. No, no, I'm just saying, cause if you see anyone's face is doing it, it's great. <laughs> <laughs> We can do it more. This one, the next one's even funnier. Um, <laughs> you know, look back and see. So, like I said, um, it's really improving that ventilation, that oxygen coming in, and that carbon dioxide, that bad gas, I like to call, out. So that's why we breathe out a little bit longer than what we breathe in. Um, the next one I wanted to show you uh, is called belly breathing. I'm just gonna simplify it. So. This one has a few steps to it. Um, I like to, what this is targeting is your diaphragm. So that's our, our diaphragm pr provides 80% of our breathing. That is our main muscle, okay? As we begin to get older, um, if we sit longer, if we're laying in bed longer, um, they, it starts to deteriorate. So what we can do is strengthen it. This is targeting it right from the start. Um, so I put one hand on my chest, one hand on my belly. The goal of this is that you're, the reason you have them is that you're, you're going to feel your belly expand when you breathe in, and then you are going to let it out, so, and breathe, and your belly should come back down. Now, you're, the reason it's on your chest is because your chest is supposed to remain still, okay? So, I'm going to demonstrate. You breathe in through your nose, and then when you breathe out, your belly should be coming back in. So breathing in through your nose, expand that belly. So it's, it's, it's awkward at first, but when you breathe back in, your belly will, should collapse, okay? It's awkward at first, but you'll get the hang of it. Um, it's really something that needs to be practiced. I like to say do it in bed because you can see your, your belly rise better. Um, so if you guys wanna do it with me, okay? So breathe in through your nose, expand that belly. Like you just had Thanksgiving dinner and then you're breathing it out, okay? Um, does anyone have any questions? I know I ran through that really quickly. Um, just, the, just on the exercises, I'll, I'll take them at the end. Um, lastly, um, so that's pretty much what I do um, to, with my cardiopulmonary program. Um, I screen everyone who comes in. Um, I you know, go over these types of techniques with them. I individualize their cardiopulmonary intervention and exercising to make sure that they're getting the best um, fitness and cardiac function as well as lung improvement. Um, and then we work to get them better as well as we're now trying to initiate a pulmonary support group. So I kind of see where they're at um, afterward, which is really fun. And um, I'm excited to see them and to check on up check in on them to see if they're doing their exercises and, you know, doing better. So um, that's good. We are 
in association with the American Lung Association. So that's pretty cool. Um, it's called the Better Breathers Club. And it's also a good way to, um, there are, to do it during this pandemic. It's a Zoom session. So it's really awesome that we can stay in touch with them. And that concludes my little snippet, my presentation. Mm -hmm. I'm happy to do anything. I'm happy to be here. This is really fun. And if you have any questions, I would like to take them now. Thank you, Daniela. Anybody have any questions? You're muted, Kathy. Kathy, <laughs> you're muted. <laughs> Don't forget to drop the uh, link into the chat box for the exercises. Yes. You didn't do it already. I'm going to do that already. So thank Thanks, you guys for Daniela. having me. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, next, we have uh, Tanya Simmons from PSENG. Hi, Rose. Is Tanya still here? Um, Hi, yep. Okay. You know what? I had muted my 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 computer. <laughs> How are we doing? Good. Can you hear me? Yes, yes we can. We cannot see you though. <laughs> okay. Okay. Great. Um, okay. My name is Tanya Simmons, and I've been with PSEG for over thirty years, but I've been a consumer advocate for ten of those. The last ten. Um, my job as a consumer advocate is basically to help those with financial difficulties, such as like low income customers, seniors, those with medical issues and things of the such. Um, right now with the coronavirus, a lot of people are falling into that category. Um, a lot of people have lost their jobs. They're now uh, seeking DSS intervention to help them with, I guess, rent arrears as well as the utility arrears. At PSEG, we do have active terminations on the bills, so they are coming to the customers, but we are not actively terminating folks. So the reason for those active terminations is so that they enable them to uh, be eligible for DSS programs, such as uh, like emergency assistance come winter time for the heating. And usually this time of year, there's emergency assistance for the regular electric, but because the state has all kinds of suspensions, it hasn't been something that they're able to get with DSS. So everything is kind of on hold. The HEAP program opens on November 2nd. Now, I don't know if everyone is completely familiar with HEAP, but it's um, called the Home Energy Assistance Program. And what it does is it, it helps low-income people pay the cost of the heating in their homes. And that's from oil, nas national grid gas, and whatever else they heat the home with. That's the primary reason for the HEAP program. I can help customers apply for HEAP if they need some assistance with that. I have a good relationship with DSS. Um, and, and for us, we start for electric heating, we also start November 2nd, but for regular electric accounts, that would require an emergency HEAP assistance grant, which opens up in January. And that's just because uh, people need assistance with their electric to keep their furnace on. So it's heat related electric. That's how they uh, categorize it. Um, at PSENG, we also have another program. It's called our household assistance rate. Now that is our actual program. What we do is we give a discount to folks who receive any form of DSS um, assistance. So that goes from SNAP, food assistance, the heat program. We also help those with Medicaid who are on Medicaid or temp temporary assistance or other, there's also like a low income um, veterans pension that is accepted. All we need is some proof and you have to be the account holder. But for those um, clients that may have say children in the home who receive food stamps, such as some undocumented folks, we do accept as long as food stamps are at that residence and there is a, an account at that residence. So we can work around some of those undocumented issues that we have in the community and you know what I want to do really is get into Glen Cove help you guys out as far as getting everyone that could be possibly um, eligible for this program to get them on a discount program and to help them lower the cost of some of these bills that are coming in with the COVID more people are home they're using their laptops they're using lighting they're using heating electricity everything is just going up yes. and these are the same people that are probably out of work and not able to afford to actually pay the bill in the first place yes um, we also have a uh, REAP program which is um, our residential energy affordability partnership that is a free energy audit program and I encourage and that 
the uh, income levels for that program are a lot higher than HEAP and our household assistance rate. So for example, a person, a single person who has an account could get a, a free energy audit if their income level is starting at 63,000. So it's a moderately um, you know, income level program. And then it just goes up from that point from um, one person, you know, two people in the household, it goes up about five or 6,000, a, 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 um, another person in the, in the home. So I, I wanted to just kind of ask if there's any, um, I guess folks that would need, if you have clients coming in to your, to your, to your agencies, if you need me, because I'm, I'm available, I'm available to zoom, I'm available to phone call. Um, as far as like, if you have any kind of client that comes in and says, okay, we're having PSCG problems. I want to make that, that connection with those folks and work with them. Even if it's just helping them to, to calm down about the anxiety of having this bill lingering for the past six months. I mean, if a person has a hundred dollars a month that they haven't been paying for the past six months due to the suspension, they're now 600 in arrears. Whereas maybe if I had talked to them six months ago, maybe it would be less because maybe they're going to do $20 a month or $15 a month. Right now, it's a very liberal time for me to try and get in and talk to clients because there is a suspension going on. And I don't want to have to talk to them next year when we are actively terminating. So I'm, I'm just trying to reach out and see if there's anybody I can help and I'll give uh, Spiro all my information and all the program numbers and things like that. Uh, if there's any questions. Um, yes, Tanya, this is Sharon. We spoke over the summer. Yes, yes. Yes, I, I want to, hi, I'm, I'm happy you finally made it to our meeting. Um, I wanted yes, to yes. let you know that um, two of my colleagues are here on the uh, Zoom with us. Uh, Francesca Carbone, who is our social worker, and Lauren Caballero is our bilingual outreach worker. And I believe I spoke with you over the summer about the fact that for 20 some odd years, we've our agency, SAFE, which is located in City Hall, has had a bilingual um, free community walk-in program. And um, we are funded by the city as well as the community development agency to warmly receive clients like you have just described and others with alcohol or uh, mental illness, substance abuse concerns. So um, I will have uh, safe get in touch with you uh, because the cold weather is coming and pretty much monthly, we have regular customers looking for assistance. In fact, poor Mayor Tanky, I think, personally uh, gave money to one of our elderly uh, clients a couple of years ago just to get her some heat delivered. So we really okay, need that's, to... That's, that's awesome. Yeah, we really need to connect with you. We have a lot of uh, female head of households that are struggling. Mm -hmm. um, right, Lauren? Absolutely. Lauren, go ahead, or feel free to chime in, or Francesca. Yes, absolutely. We would like to have that information. We have lots of people here in Glencoe who needs that kind of help, okay? I try to guide them, and I, I, I talk to some of the people there, but, you know, some of them, they don't know how, they, they, how to get the help, okay? So if you can okay. try and give me some numbers, you know, or maybe I talk to you, and Absolutely. I, if, if you and I can have some, sorry. Yeah, go ahead. I was going to say, if you and I have an email going back and forth, um, that's fine. Like as soon as you get a client, you email me and then we, I can call them back. Um, I can also give the number, I'll give uh, Spiro the number for our, um, we have a consumer advocacy hotline and there is, it's bilingual right. as well. So okay. that, you know, somebody can directly, a client can definitely call in and then somebody calls them back, which would normally be me. Um, and the other thing is there are, there's another program that I, I am able to do applications for and it's called Project Warmth. That starts in December. And that is for those who are experiencing uh, an emergency situation. So it's a one-time grant and it's, it's funded by the United Way. So there's a lot of things that I can help clients with. And like I said, I just need that in so that I can get okay. that connection going. You have okay. one, you have one. We have one, yeah. Tanya, awesome. yeah. Tanya can I, can I uh, suggest that you put your phone number and uh, whatever uh, website 
that you want us to know in the chat. People can mm -hmm. uh, sure. save that, copy it. Thank you. Sure, and the, the email that I'm gonna put is just for uh, the agency usage, and then I'll put the advocacy hotline for the clients, just so that we don't get people coming to my email like crazy. <laughs> okay. Can I ask you a question, just to make it clear? Okay. Sure. Most of my clients are illegal, right? But they, they mm -hmm. are paying the electricity or the water, but uh, can they get this uh, help even if they're illegal? Yes, they can. Yes, they can. And that's one of the things that I've been trying to do um, just personally, um, you know, to advocate for those that are illegal, but they have accounts. We don't, we don't they discriminate do against people. Yes. Not exactly. Yes. And, but they don't realize that they can get some assistance here and there. And a lot of them are fearful to apply. And I understand yes. that as well. Yes. Uh, and I, and there is, we do know, we do no public reporting. You know what I mean? We do not do any reporting to any agencies. And that is something that I wanted to get through as well to that population. And, you know, it, it pains me to see that they're fearful to apply for assistance when yes. they're a very hardworking group of folks. And sometimes they run across a difficulty just like everyone else. Right. Right. There. Yes. I know a couple of people that are very behind with the bills. Yes. Okay, I would love to meet you and talk to you and, you know. Sure. Yes. Thank you so much. Will do. I'm going to put my information in the chat now. Thank you, Gabor. Okay. Tanya, so it is you, right? I know there's somebody else that was contacting me. It is or... me. Erin is okay. actually my supervisor that you met. And what happened was I was on vacation for the delivery of those backpacks. So that's why I just didn't do that delivery. Got but it, I am it, the contact it. for Glen Cove, yeah. Mm-hmm. Perfect. Okay. Uh, anybody else have any other questions for Tanya? Going once, twice. All right. Uh, last but not least, um, Dr. Sharon Harris, Francesca, and Ms. Caballero have a few things they want to say uh, regarding Red Ribbon Week. So the uh, Zoom is all yours. Oh, well, let's, I'll let Francesca start. I have to take um, minutes. <laughs> Okay, um, so for Red Ribbon Week, um, that's coming up next week, we will be, because now LST, um, the Life Skills um, After Grade Program, is all virtual now, so we will be doing a PowerPoint with the kids. We'll also have, um, I believe, one of the police officers come and do a uh, presentation as well. The theme is Be Brave, Be Safe, Be Drug Free. So we'll do a presentation about that, um, kind of what Red Ribbon Week's about, you know, all that stuff kind of lead more so more on the vaping aspect as well, because it's very big right now. Um, Explain what Red Ribbon Week is, sorry. Red Ribbon Week is a week to just educate the kids and, um, you know, K through 12, we mostly deal right now with elementary and middle school um, about um, what it is to take the pledge to stay drug free whether it be smoking, any type of other, you know, other drug, and um, now along with adding vaping in as well. So we're taking the pledge to stay that way as long as and to help others who are also maybe struggling as well with it. Um, this has been going on for years, um, and it has shown a lot of um, improvement um, with the kids and just kind of building them up and building their self-esteem up and saying, you know what, you can, you know, not be in that category of kids who, you know, tend to lean more towards using drugs. Um, so this theme is more based off of, it started with um, a class that wanted to, this teacher did a, always would tell their kids, you're brave, you can do it. Um, and a lot of them are very into superheroes. So that's how the theme kind of came about for this year, which is very, I think, you know, mm -hmm. um, more of a, you know, it attracts the kids because who doesn't love to be a superhero? Um, so we'll be doing that. Um, Patty had gotten to me saying that unfortunately in the past year we had done where we would hand out um, ribbons, other fun activities, other pencils, other kind of little kits for the kids into the schools. We dropped them off. We unfortunately cannot do that this year. Um, so she had let me know that the giveaways, we did certain giveaways for kids. Last year we did almost a poster contest, which will probably do a similar type of thing so the kids can get involved and um, see what kind of creativity they have for this theme. Um, but we aren't allowed to be doing giveaways. Um, 
they don't see us also giving stuff to the parents as well because they feel like they might throw them out. Um, but they are willing to do a live Google Meet through the school in the morning with a police officer for no more than 10 minutes um, on Wednesday since the entire school is remote that day. So we're going to have to obviously get in contact and let the you know police officers know um, kind of that day kind of is going to be the day that they would come in and say their presentation. And um, Wednesday, I actually do the life skills training um, later on in the day. So it all kind of ties in for that one um, day, which is good. Um, we can't necessarily be inside with the school. So hopefully the teachers have something planned as well. We can also reach out to them and give them any other little things, but um, we're going to make it work just virtually. So it'll be good. Um, we'll post everything as well onto our website, Facebook, everything like that. So, um, and have links. So if Carolina, who also um, helped us out, she, I'm sure will contact the parents as well to let the kids know or let them know what the kids will be doing. And we'll kind of go from there. It'll be a little bit different, but we'll make it fun for the kids and educational. We'll make it goal. fun. I mean, I have to just say that SAVE has been sponsoring Red Ribbon Week through the Office of Alcohols and Southern Juice Services for over 25 years. And without the partnership of the school district, um, I don't think it would have been nearly as successful. I know Dr. Israel is somewhere on this Zoom. Uh, he has participated in countless Red Ribbon Weeks over the years over the years and it's a lot of fun the school district makes it a real happy time uh, uh, around a very uh, unfortunate uh, substance use is just an unfortunate uh, blight on on the human condition but the but the school fosters and develops a nice learning environment for a week long we do art contests. The safe board would go in and present winners, the uh, Dr. Israel, all, all the teachers, the, the principals, the superintendent, right? I mean, right. we make fun. We make a fun week out of it. The police yeah. department would go in, make pre prevention presentations. So what we're what we'd like to do, IAC, is let you guys know that if you have parents and children, uh, child clients that would like to participate in Red Ribbon Week or receive giveaways, we have them. Mm -hmm. And please contact right. either myself or Francesca or Lord, Mrs. Caballero, and we can create a way to get them to you and, and to the children. Right, right. right. so yeah. um, we'll be doing a type of, I guess like small little contest, similar to what we would do in the schools, but obviously, gear it to the kids who are going to be on zoom with me um but we have other things too so if you know a kid who's going above and beyond on their own time and it's just like hey I want to be a part of this too um yeah let us know because we will happily send them something um you know they're doing the work and we want to still make that fun for them you know unfortunately we can't be in the school with them and, and experience all that that it's been like that for years which has been great and is a lot of fun but we'll still you know make it half right. as good as what it was in the schools. Right. I'm going to try my best to do it with my Spanish parents and right. my Spanish children. Yeah. We okay. will make it. Yeah. It'll be good. Okay. That's all. Awesome. Thank you, guys. You Anybody have any questions? Dr. Israel, I think I cut you off. What did you say? No, I was just thanking them for what they continue to do. Oh, you're welcome. And and look, I know that there are restrictions about giving stuff away, but if you if you can come, if you could work with us on some kind of creative location in Glen Cove where we could happily wear masks and set up a table, maybe you could direct parents and students to that said location so they could at least, um, you know, get get something tangible out of the week. And we can Maybe we can, you know, we can speak to Kathy Flynn as well and uh, have a station at the library. Maybe. And then all, all the school has to do is, is tell, tell the kids and the parents, if you want your ribbon, you got to go to the library this year. That's all. All right. All right. Something like that. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Thank you, ladies. Uh, anybody else have any other questions for them? Good. Uh, that's... 
we have, with our we have Kathy Flynn joining and also we have uh, Maureen and Anne Fengman also. Wonderful. And while we were going on, welcome to all. Hey, ladies. Good morning. Um, it took me a few tries to get on this morning. I saw that. <laughs> what it's, it's I'm on my phone you. and I'm on two computers to do this call. Don't ask. <laughs> okay, I'm not asking. <laughs> All right. Um, Colleen couldn't be on the call this morning, but uh, the IAC board has taken the initiative of revitalizing, working with a adopt a spot. So we're still in the beginning stages of it, but she did say that things were moving along well. Uh, I believe the spot that we did identify for an IAC adopter spot would be by the security booth, correct? Yes. Yes. There is talks of Greek statues, grapevines, and stuff like that, but I'm not volunteering. <laughs> I'll, I'll be um, planting with Colleen. We have already purchased a few. I think she had already picked up some mums, so because the weather was so bad, um, we've been waiting to get out there. So if anybody wants to cruise on by and drop off a Starbucks, feel free. <laughs> yeah. But whoever else wants to volunteer or obviously it's our spot, so everyone is welcome. Um, I'm pretty competitive, so I want our spot to be the best spot. <laughs> <laughs> um, just a couple of other things. Uh, breakfast. We're all about a good breakfast. Uh, the IAC holiday breakfast is in December. We can think about it and discuss it next month, see if it's something that we would like to do. Uh, if it's warm enough, maybe the view can have something set up outside. If you guys do want to do an in-person meeting, the option is there. No obligation. You don't have to come, but maybe a way to get everyone together again. Um, the Thanksgiving food drive. I am picking up from Greenville School District. They, they volunteered again to collect food for us. So we will have some items. Uh, it doesn't look like it's gonna be as big as it has been in the past. I will probably be working with Nash and a couple of other agencies and give them the food that we have collected. Uh, that being said, if you guys have lists, start collecting the names, put the list together and we can schedule a meeting after the executive meeting next month and figure out how and what would be the best way to do this. St. Rocco's is giving their facility up to Nosh, so they won't have that same location for us to use. So that's why I'm thinking maybe for this year, uh, we can work with them or somebody who has already a pantry established. Uh, the Youth Bureau, we are just closed for just kids, so I don't have the storage capacity or the space to, to store any of the food. But again, conversations to be had. Um, before we go into the treasury report, I believe, and next month, Camille is speaking on S-O-N-Y-M-A. Uh, I, th I think we have the representative from Sony May uh, who's gonna be giving a presentation to the IAC. We've, um, Camille and I, and I believe other members of the city have met with her in the past, the last time, I think a few years ago. And, you know, uh, given everybody's housing situation and lots of people refinancing right now and everything that's going on, she's also reaching out to vulnerable populations. And, you know, we thought a perfect way for her to get out there and start reaching some of these populations, which includes the Spanish speaking population. She actually has a, um, a Spanish version of her presentation as well, would be uh, for her to present to the IAC board and then have everyone take it back to their respective uh, membership organizations and also take questions um, on her materials. Great, that's awesome. Uh, um, Excuse yes. Me. Can, Anne, can you send me a little blurb on that that I can send out so people are aware of what we're gonna be hearing? Sure, and I believe we have some materials we can send ahead of time as well. Okay. Great. We do have availability for speakers from November until June. Uh, if anybody has something they would like to present, please let us know as soon as possible. We'll schedule you. Um, can you share the schedule, what we have so far? Can you share the schedule, what we have so far? 
Yeah, it's on my computer. I'm not gonna be able to do it from here, but I can uh, email it to Carolyn. I think Carolyn, you have it, no? No, I don't have it. Okay, so I'll send it out to Carolyn and we'll send it out. Basically, the only uh, presenter is um, next month and that's it. We're basically clean for the rest of the year. So uh, if whoever would like to present, please take, uh, take up one of these spots. Just a reminder, next month's meeting is not on the, uh, on the 11th, the Wednesday. That's Veterans Day. So we are meeting on the 12th, which is Thursday. We will send out reminders for that as well. Um, Gabor, I'm going to have you hold off one more second. I believe Kathy's on the meeting. Kathy? Yes. Um, good morning, Spiro. Good morning, good morning. everybody. Good morning. I, lost I apologize for being late. I am... Um, scheduled a library director meeting for this morning as well and then realized I couldn't be in two places at once. <laughs> <laughs> Kathy, we just wanted to say thank you for everything that you've done. Uh, you've been a great president, a great leader, and uh, you can't leave us, so you're still around. <laughs> Very kind of you, Spiro, thank you. And I know you're gonna do a tremendous job. You've got the, the drive, vision and everything to everything you need to move this uh the iac forward thank you thank you kathy um gabor your turn yes mr president um we have uh, we have money make a lot of money let me share my screen so i can uh, share this i email this to everybody hopefully it's gonna pop up on, on your screen just scrolling down we have $7,962.34 in the bank as of this morning. We will have to pay uh, our um, CPA for the tax return soon. That's gonna take off a few bucks, but we really need to um, think about something to do with this money because it should be around 5,000 to be safe, but this is, um, you know, a little more than we need. Um, what so are we paying the accountant? A few hundred bucks. I didn't look it up. So it's less than a thousand? Yeah. Oh, no. yeah. Yeah, way less. Okay. So that's something to think about. Um, Is it the, something we could hold on to for our uh, 50th anniversary events yeah, that we're definitely, planning? Definitely. We would like to do something nice for our 50th and um, there might be some expenses to that. Uh, we were going to do a gala, but that's not, not the treasurer's report. Uh, what the treasurer's report is, if you look at this list you, you got in an email, there are a few um, agencies who owe us money for this year. I encourage everybody to, um, to pay, um, let me get rid of this, to pay uh, uh, for two years when you pay, so you, I don't have to hassle you in a, in a couple of weeks. So the Atria, uh, CTI, Evangelical Church, Bangkok Hospital, and there is Greek Church, Planned Parenthood, uh, the uh, JCC, Trinity Church, uh, United Methodist Church, and the YMCA. If they would pay, then we would be re well over last year's record. Um, number of 45 paid agencies right now we are at 40. so and these these um agencies almost all of them are regulars so i think we should really reach out to them and get their payment um and then we're gonna be fine and i will bother you for money in a few months thank you so very much thank you uh, anybody have any announcements or anything coming up they'd like to discuss? Can I go? Yeah. Kathy. Yeah, um, tomorrow at Emerge, we, um, which is two medical plaza, we're hosting a drive-through for the community. Um, so we're giving away care packages that have masks, uh, hand sanitizer, uh, you know, tchotchke items as well. But we're also giving away breakfast and seasonal goodies. So. The, if you know anyone in the community that could benefit from that, we're doing that from 10 to 1130. 
and um, that's at Emerge. And at Glen Cove Center, I just had a couple of announcements. We have a couple of new services available to the community. Um, once you've been a resident at Glen Cove Center and get discharged, we have a patient navigator system now where someone is specifically trailing the uh, residents that get discharged. So once they're gone, we follow up with them to see if they're having any problems with medical equipment, medication, uh, how they're adjusting to their home life, and if, you know, just to make sure that they stay well once they leave our facility. And in the facility, we now have a partnership with Northwell where we have telehealth available. So we have 24 seven availability of uh, physician care which is a new initiative. It's really exciting. Um, only two facilities in Nassau County have access to that and we were picked as one of them. And one more thing about Glen Cove Center, um, Newsweek just ranked us as one of the best nursing homes. Um, I, I don't remember the ranking. I wanna say it was number 30 or 31, but one of the things they used to make that designation was the way we handled COVID. So just a couple of things to you know, make everyone aware of. Um, Glen Cove Center has a cardiopulmonary specialty, which you guys heard Daniela speak about, and Emerge, which is our sister facility, literally right next door, we have a neuro rehab specialty. So just things to be aware of if you know of anyone in the community that is in need of rehab once they've been in the hospital and have had these situations come up, we're there as a resource for the community while they're with us and after they're with us as well. Thank you, Kathy. You're welcome. Yeah. Kathy, Kathy, Kathy. <laughs> um, just to let you know, at 5.30 tomorrow, uh, Assemblyman Chuck Levine is um, having a webinar on how to fill out the absentee ballot for people who want to vote by absentee ballot. Thank you. Um, Anyone else? Yes, Vero, can I just ask that anybody who um, has new people that work with them that you want to receive the announcements for IAC, or if you have any changes to send them to me to keep us updated because I see some new faces here that I don't have on it. And if, if you want uh, me to send them, Perfect. So be happy. And, and we could adjust the website as well. Um, Gabor, now speaking about website, we can probably put these meetings on the IAC website in a folder and keep we them stored probably. there. Um, I that help. might not be a bad idea. I can help with that. If you want. Yeah, I awesome. can. Do you have access to our website, uh, Jamie? Yes. Okay, I can email it to you then once Great. we are Great. I have an announcement um, yep. as well. Um, so the uh, Rotary did such a great job with the reverse raffle that the Glen Cove Chamber of Congress um, is also doing a reverse raffle in honor of, um, in memory of Ed Smith, uh, Glen Cove band teacher. Mm -hmm. um, so if you haven't already and you're interested in supporting the Chamber's um, initiative, please go ahead and um, get a raffle ticket. It's going to be on, um, the drawing is on November 17th at 7 p.m. Um, and the site to purchase the ticket are, uh, is givebutter.com slash Chamber raffle. I'll put it on the chat as well. Yeah, send me send me a note and uh, I'll send it out. Okay. Yeah, we we raised uh, we raised ten thousand dollars. So go ahead, top it off, please. Excellent. If you need any help, let me know. <laughs> I gladly help. The board did a great job with that reverse raffle for the Locust Valley Rotary. It was, I mean, it was yeah. amazing. It was fun and. The amount of money we raised just selling the raffle tickets was really awesome. Right. Thanks, Gabor. Thank you, everybody, uh, for helping. Vera, I just have a, um, a quick thing. Um, just wanted to uh, thank the IAC for their uh, role in Census Saturday. Um, also, uh, uh, Representative Swazi, Cindy Rogers. Thank you also to Gabor. Um, and Kathy Flynn, Vero, La Fuerza, all the members who helped make Census Saturday a success. Um, the Census Bureau informed the mayor's office a few days after the event that we were roughly at 99% counted. Oh, wonderful. Wow. Uh, yeah, so it re really was very, very successful. And thank you to everybody that, that helped out. It was- uh, That's a lot of great. Help. What was the percent, Maureen? I'm sorry. 
99? 99%. Yeah. Oh, that's fabulous. Yes. Yes. That yes. Is. So it was very good news. Very good news. Um, and also just uh, quickly, um, I'm not sure if anyone mentioned it before, but this coming Saturday, the 17th, is going to be the tulip planting, Glen Cove Cares, and uh, beautification. So if anyone's interested in helping uh, plant some tulips for um, Breast Cancer Awareness Month, um, we'll be meeting behind uh, City Hall at 9 o'clock. And uh, all hands are welcome. Thank you, Maureen. I have an announcement, Spiro. Um, I have a new poetry book that's uh, just out on uh, Amazon. It's called Can You See Freedom and Other, Other Poems About the Importance of Interracial and Interfaith Understanding. So Kathy, I will have a few copies to donate to the library. Um, also in uh, the North Shore Business Network, I'm the featured person of the month of October. Uh, yes. I'll send that to, to Carolyn to send to everybody. Uh, they did a little story about my poetry. So yeah. I'll send that to you to share with everybody. Okay. Um, I also have a quick announcement. Um, you go. Sorry, um, I work uh, clinical operations over at Planned Parenthood of Greater New York is just looking for some support in gathering information and perspective on just the importance of the health centers and the various communities that have closed. I know our Planned Parenthood um, site over in Glen Cove has been shut down due to the pandemic. And so um, I can provide my email, but any insight on the perspective of the impact it's having on the, com on the community, both you know, positive and negative in terms of other um, health sites that um, individuals are going to, or just the lack of having um, a site close to them that is open, how that's impacting their day-to-day -day lives. So I will provide my email and any insight is welcome. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And Spiro, I have an announcement also. Mm -hmm. um, just in following a suit with many uh, speakers uh, today, I found out yesterday that Charles Evans Center is uh, one of a number of mental health agencies in Nassau County. <clears throat> to receive a FEMA grant to develop a crisis counseling program for people behaviorally affected uh, by uh, COVID. Uh, the purpose of the program is to help uh, people affected uh, by COVID recognize- the, uh, by the, um, Xbox. Is it there for I'm sorry? No, nothing. He, he, he muted himself. Oh, okay. Um, the purpose of the counseling program is to help uh, people affected by COVID recognize that uh, emotional reactions are uh, normal and to develop uh, coping skills that will allow folks to uh, resume their pre-disaster level of functioning and equilibrium. Uh, we've had uh, at formerly Melillo Center, we've had uh, crisis uh, counseling programs in the past. Carolyn remembers uh, back to the days of uh, Avianca. Uh, we had a grant for the Bayville flood Senator Marcelino had given us a, a sex assault a crisis a counseling grant, and we received a little money for post 9-11 counseling. So uh, this is a, a program that's familiar to us. Let me read some of the activities that the program is supposed to accomplish. Assisting uh, uh, folks in understanding their current situation and emotional reactions mitigating additional stress, assisting survivors in reviewing their options, promoting the use or development of coping strategies, providing emotional support, encouraging linkages uh, with other individuals and agencies who may help folks recover to their pre-disaster level of functioning. And that's why it was important uh, for me to be at the meeting today and hear all of uh, the other speakers because IAC will be a valuable uh, resource to this program that we're developing. So uh, not only do we wanna reach out to uh, the folks uh, affected uh, by COVID in terms of uh, mental health and uh, drug and alcohol, but also we would be looking to the community for uh, uh, folks to uh, employ in this program. Uh, we're going to have uh, two, two teams. Uh, there'll be a coordinator, two team leaders. These folks are going to be uh, credentialed licensed folks, but each team will have six to eight crisis counselors. So, uh, and uh, those folks do not have to be licensed or uh, credentialed. 
and um, so we, we would be uh, announcing that we'll be employing some folks to also work as uh, counselors in this uh, program. Now it's a short term grant, it'll only be for about uh, nine months. Uh, it's fully funded, so there'll be no fees involved. I'm assuming uh, most of it will be uh, remote, but uh, that doesn't necessarily have to be. Uh, we have been uh, seeing some clients here at 113 Glen Cove Avenue, of course, with all uh, uh, co uh, precautions and uh, protections in place. And uh, since I just found out yesterday, we're still in the process of trying to work out uh, public notification to everybody. So uh, perhaps I can speak more about it at the next uh, meeting, uh, Spiro. So um, um, thank you for the time to announce this and look forward to working with all of you on this uh, program. So, wait, you. Dr. Bogren, it's me. It's Sharon. Um, hey, Sharon. Hey. So this is wonderful news. Um, I just want to understand the staffing. So the crisis counselors themselves do not have to be licensed? That is correct. Yeah. Um, and the idea is that uh, this, this program, although it was mental health agencies uh, that right. uh, got this uh, grant, it's, it's supposed to be um, just about the opposite of uh, traditional regulated uh, structured uh, therapy. It's okay. supposed to be all here in the now and react to, uh, to people uh, where they are right now. No diagnoses, no treatment plans. It's really all in the here and now and helping uh, folks okay. uh, cope. So it's brief supportive therapy, yep. but it's more, it's, it's more support than it is counseling. No, it, it'll, it'll be counseling too. Okay, so what kind of uh, staff person would you be looking at and whom do we contact if we have potential referrals for you? Nicole, you? Uh, well, you can, yeah, you can uh, touch base uh, with me. Um, okay. I had, I had a team meeting yesterday within the organization regard, <laughs> regarding how we're going to uh, start to roll this out. Okay. Uh, we're, we're just in the process right now, of, of course, doing uh, the budget and all of uh, the paperwork necessary for the grant. Okay, so when does the grant ef ef effectively begin? Well, um, hopefully any day right now. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, the, I'm, I'm sure that the county will probably have an announcement about this also. That'll they should. It's right such now. a yeah. wonderful opportunity. Mm -hmm. um, as Francesca and Mrs. Caballero and I can tell you, we have our, thank God for the Community Development Agency, because our walk-in program during March, April, and May doubled because of COVID-related issues. Um, I was going to ask Mr. <laughs> Brogren, Mr. Brogren, what um, could like anybody, is it more like a, uh, like a, a th or I would say a therapy group? Because I do have some clients that would probably benefit from, you know, COVID relief in a sense or, you know, trauma or loss of a spouse or something due to COVID. Would they be, would it benefit them to like join this? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. This, again, this is going to be uh, wide open okay. and uh, unlike uh, historically traditional uh, psychotherapy, admission criteria, treatment plans, uh, right. all that structure. It's really supposed to be able to help people in the here and now, engage folks right away, and have uh, really no, no barriers to getting someone uh, psychological behavioral assistance. That's great, that's great. Um, we will be in right. touch, Dr. Vogren. We have a lot of referrals for this program. That'll be great, that'll be good. Um, and that's, that's exactly why I'm announcing it today. And uh, uh, I can see how uh, all of the agencies within uh, Interagency Council uh, responded in helping people in this pandemic. And I'm uh, just uh, glad that uh, this FEMA grant came through and uh, that Nassau County Office of Mental Health is participating in this and channeling this money to a variety of mental health agencies, including Charles Evans Center. Wonderful. Thank you. And if I can jump you. on uh, Dr. Bogren's um, coattails here, at the library, we have two social work interns this year. Um, they'll be available virtually on Tuesdays and in person at the library on Saturdays. Thank you. Very good. Anyone wants to, you can make an appointment, you can walk in, whatever. 
Okay. A quick question. Um, do they have to be Glencoe residents to partake? Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, Glen Cove, of course, is um, um, uh, a big city with uh, 27,000 folks, but the surrounding area also has 25,000 people. Um, and uh, that's a lot of folks and uh, a lot of people were affected, of course, by the pandemic. So, no, it's, it's open to um, uh, Glen Cove and the surrounding areas. I have an announcement, if I may. Um, the uh, Rotary is uh, spending some of the money that we uh, raised on the reverse raffle um, on uh, coats for kids um, and uh, what we call gloves for hugs. Um, as far as, uh, besides the food insecurity, uh, as we heard, um, there is uh, a lot of uh, uh, folks that cannot afford even their bills. So some of the kids are going without winter coats, gloves, um, and hats. So we went shopping and uh, we are going to provide uh, warm winter clothing for a hundred plus kids. And the golf club is doing another hundred plus kids. This is all through the schools. We learn about the kids from their uh, teachers. We keep their um, privacy intact. We protect their privacy, but we provide them with the um, coats and uh, seeing their, their faces. And um, when they get a brand new beautiful coat and all the accessories, uh, it's priceless. So that's yeah. just one of the things that we do. Thank you, Gabor. Anyone else? No. Nope. All right. Thank you, everybody, for uh, attending our meeting today. Um, please, if you do want to present, uh, send myself or Carolyn Wilson an email, put you on the calendar. We can't wait to hear what you have to share with us. Uh, our next meeting, as discussed, will be Thursday, November 12th, the day after Veterans Day. Uh, and Ann Fangman actually sent me an email Regarding the presentation, we have to find out because I think it's through uh, Teams. So I don't know how everything gets mixed up. So we got to figure that out and how we're going to do that. Um, but we will see everyone next month. Continue to stay safe. And if you guys need anything, you know where to find us. Bye. 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 Thank you. Bye. Thank you.